Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Julie Oliver and she's not a scientist but she is quite interested in science and she's also quite interested in testicles which is a subject we will be covering in this video although she's more interested in dog testicles and human testicles which makes for a less embarrassing life for me. So now that, no doubt you've all heard about the tweet from Nicki Minaj, who's apparently a rapper, but if you haven't, here it is. She claims that her cousin's friend in Trinidad got swollen testicles and was now impotent after getting the COVID vaccine. And this resulted in his fiance calling off the wedding. Now the health minister from Trinidad has confirmed that they have had no reported cases of swollen testicles following vaccination and unsurprisingly it hasn't been reported in any other countries either. This is an example of the faulty logic displayed by anti-vaxxers claiming that any event that occurs after vaccination is caused by the vaccine. Of course we know correlation doesn't equal causation. Common causes of swollen testicles include infections with STDs like chlamydia and gonorrhea. Not casting aspersions on her cousin's friend, but finding out your future husband had an STD would be a good reason to call off a wedding. Now, I'm sure the majority of people never took this tweet seriously. However, although I've never heard of Nicki Minaj, a lot of people have, and she's considered an influencer. I, on the other hand, am just a scientist with a cute dog. Nicki Minaj has over 22 million followers. And at the time I took the screenshot, over 140,000 had actually liked this tweet. And unfortunately, this is just an example of the misinformation that is being spread on social media about vaccines and male fertility. Now, you may have picked up from my accent that I live in Australia. We are a bit behind a lot of countries with our vaccine rollout, but we are already seeing a, a very worrying trend amongst young males. Now, this chart shows a number of vaccines administered in Australia as of the 16th of September, 2021. It's a little bit confusing to look at, so I'll just go through what the bars mean. So the bars on the left are the females in each age group and the bars on the right are the males. The gray bars show the total number in each age group. The blue bars show the total number who have had one dose of vaccine and the orange bars show the total number who have had both doses. The percentages shown are the proportion of each age and sex group that have had at least one dose of vaccine. So looking at the data, we can see that overall there is a much lower uptake amongst younger people. This is nothing to be alarmed about. It simply reflects the fact that younger age groups haven't had access to the vaccines for as long. What is more concerning though, is if we compare males and females in the younger age groups, we see that males are less likely to be vaccinated than females. So looking at the 20 to 24 age group, we can see for females, it's 53%, whereas for males, it's 45.5%. And then for the 25 to 29, it's 54.8% for the females and 50.6% for the males. And as the groups get older, we do see it start to balance out a bit. And by the time you get to my age group, which is 55 to 59, we see that it's 79% vaccination rate for both. Now it's still early days, but concerningly, the same gender disparity amongst young people is also being seen in the UK, where only 53% of males aged 25 to 29 are fully vaccinated, compared to 62% of females. Now, there could be any number of reasons for this difference, but I've been told anecdotally by friends that their sons are reluctant to get vaccinated because they fear it will affect their fertility. And it's also clear from looking at social media that there are a number of people sharing misinformation about vaccines and fertility. So let's go back to the science and see what the actual studies show. This study was undertaken by a group at the University of Miami and published in JAMA. And it looked at the sperm quality of 45 men before and after vaccination. The men were aged 18 to 50 years and scheduled for an mRNA COVID-19 vaccination. They provided a semen sample after two to seven days of abstinence prior to receiving their first vaccine dose and then approximately 70 days after their second dose. So what did the researchers find? Let's have a look. 
So this table summarizes the results of the study. So we can see that prior to the vaccine, the median sperm concentration was 26 million per mil, and the total motile sperm count was 36 million. Pretty big numbers, hey? After the second vaccine dose, these values increased to 39 million per mil for the median sperm concentration and 44 million for the total motile sperm count. And semen volume and sperm motility were also significantly increased. Sperm motility basically means how fast they swim. Now, these are the median values, but the authors also reported on the total sperm count change for all participants, and you can see them here. So you can see that some men saw an increase in sperm count and some men saw a decrease. And this is exactly what you would expect from natural variation. Importantly though, no men became azoospermic after the vaccine. And azoospermic basically means having no sperm in your semen. Now it's important to note that although more men had increased sperm counts than decreased sperm counts, the authors aren't suggesting that getting vaccinated actually improves sperm quality. They suggest other possible reasons, including a slightly increased abstinence time for the samples taken post-vaccination. But it is clear that the myth that vaccines negatively affect fertility has been well and truly debunked. And we don't just have this study. The vaccines have now been given to hundreds of millions of men and there has been no adverse fertility reported. But what about COVID-19? Can that affect fertility? Well, it appears that in some men it can. Let's have a look. This is a review paper that summarizes the research that has been done to date on the effect of SARS-CoV-2 infection on male fertility. And it has a handy table that provides a quick overview of the main outcomes of each study. So let's scroll down and have a peek. Ah, here it is. Now, an important thing to remember is not everyone looks at the same things in studies. So not all studies will have information on the parameters that we are interested in. So there were eight studies in all. In two of the studies, SARS-CoV-2 was found in the semen of some of the patients, but in the rest of the studies, the semen tested negative. Only two studies measured reproductive symptoms, and in each of these studies, some patients suffered from scrotal discomfort, which doesn't sound very pleasant. And five studies assessed semen quality, and in every case, there was a reduction in sperm quality, including reduced concentrations, decreased motility, and decreased morphology. And decreased sperm morphology means misshapen sperm. Now, it is important to mention that this doesn't mean that everyone who gets COVID will have reduced sperm quality, but it is something that can happen. The authors of the review also suggested some possible mechanisms by which COVID could cause fertility issues, and they are summarised in this figure. We won't get bogged down in the details, but they are saying there are two main mechanisms. The first mechanism involves direct infection of the testes with SARS-CoV-2, which subsequently leads to cell apoptosis. And cell apoptosis means programmed cell death. The other suggested mechanism revolve around the body's immune response. What can sometimes happen with COVID is the immune response continues after the virus is cleared and this hyperactive immune response causes damage to organs through inflammation and oxidative stress and that can include damage to the testes. So just to summarise, there is no evidence whatsoever that vaccines affect fertility but there is some evidence that catching COVID could. Now, if you'd like to read the papers that I discussed yourselves, you'll find the links to them in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. So thank you for listening. And if you'd like to see more videos in the future, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.